Good evening, South Tama Trojan fans. Welcome to our first volleyball broadcast of the season. Today we're live from the STC Roundhouse, and it is the opening of WAMAC conference play for the STC Trojans. Tonight we have the South Tama varsity team taking on the Clear Creek Amana Clippers. I'm Darvin Graham, and I'm joined by my co-host for the evening, Hunter White. Hunter, how are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely great, Darvin. Glad to be in the Roundhouse with you. Yeah, it feels good to, to really get in the volleyball environment. Um, really strong program for South Tama in terms of uh, in terms of participation. Tons of kids out, a, a packed house here for the most part, um, for especially for the South Tama crowd as we're getting ready for the volleyball game here tonight. So STC uh, coming into this one off of a couple of uh, tournament plays. Uh, the last two Saturdays they've been in action. Last weekend was the BCLUW tournament. And the weekend before was the Grinnell tournament to start the season. We uh, were not able to, unfortunately, go live uh, last week during the, uh, the Montezuma match, or the Montezuma meet was canceled due to an unexpected uh, death in the community over in the Montezuma community. So our thoughts do go out to those folks um, in the Montezuma area. And so that kind of brings us up here to tonight. We've got South Tama uh, really facing one of the best <laughs> volleyball teams in the state of Iowa. Uh, they're number one ranked. They were a, um, a runner-up in Class 4A last year. Took a loss um, in four sets to Cedar Rapids Xavier Catholic. And here they are tonight bringing back all their starters. We'll get a, a little closer look at some of their uh, key players who we might see on the court this evening, as well as South Tama's starters and key players. But uh, thanks for being with us. We're, uh, we're about uh, 15, 20 minutes away from first serve here at the Roundhouse as the... Uh, varsity teams are getting ready to take the court for their warm-up. You can see the lights uh, dimmed here a little bit as some uh, dramatics underway, I believe. <laughs> I always like it when they dim the lights for this. really sets the mood. Yeah, absolutely. Got a really... We're, we're, we've got our scoreboard set up on the, on the uh, north end of the gym, and uh, so you can't see the, the, the digital scoreboard, but it looks really nice up here if you mm -hmm. haven't been to the, the STC gym in a while. Uh, really nice... A new scoreboard sponsored and made possible by the uh, South Tame Activity Boosters here on, on the south wall, or the, excuse me, the north wall. So uh, anyway, we are excited to be here. We're going to take a little bit of a break. we got a few things to, to get through here during this pregame show. Uh, we're going to uh, hear from STC's interim head coach during a coach's corner, Ashley Rowey. We're going to break down the matchup between the STC Trojans and the Clear Creek Amanda Clippers. We'll get your starters, and we've got a special interview with STC Captain Gloria Mullen. So don't go anywhere. We'd like to say thank you before we quick uh, go to a break to our sponsors this season. They include Berkwood Village of Tama Toledo, Salt Creek Wind, Mercy Care Tama, Iowa Premium, State Bank of Toledo, SNS Car Wash, Cruzy Phillips Funeral Home, Robach Lumber, Stein Robach Floor Coverings, Mark West and Hoyer Law Office, Medicap Pharmacy, Assured Partners Insurance, Appraisal and Realty Services. Sharn Webbers and TFD Photo and Film. Trojan Country Broadcasts also made possible by the Charlie Townsley Memorial. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a short break. Corner here with the STC volleyball program. I'm joined by South Tampa volleyball coach Ashley Rowley. Ashley, how are you doing today? We're catching you on a, a busy day of practice. How's it going for the Trojans? Um, well, it's good to be here. Um, yeah. We're working really hard in the gym and getting all reps and 
getting ready for Saturday and Monday. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about your first tournament of the season last Saturday. Um, bunch of games, I think four or five games, correct? Yep, that's correct. How did those go for this Trojans uh, team? I saw just box score wise, um, some wins, a um, couple losses, got a, a set off of an Urbandale team. Um, what were some of the highlights from, uh, from this group on Saturday? Um, on Saturday, we actually played Urbandale first. Um, and we came out with the first set win, so they came out really excited, um, ready to go, which is a kind of change for us. Normally, we're a little slow to get going, so they were ready to be there. They were ready to work together. Mm -hmm. um, Urbandale is a tough team, um, but I feel that we did play well against them. Mm -hmm. um, we played a West Liberty team that was a, a tough battle. We have th some things to work on coming from that game. Um, we also played Washington, and we ended up taking – the two sets from them. Yeah. So the girls really came together, uh, found that big voice that we've been working on. And How do you feel like this group has, uh, or what have you learned about this group now that they've gotten some actual live competition or you know live um, games that are counting towards the record? Um, you know, Knowing who they were last year and seeing this group this year, kind of what did you learn about the group uh, over on Saturday? Um, I feel like they've really stepped up. Um, we lost some big leaders last year, so I feel like they've stepped up to the plate and they have the same passion about volleyball that the coaches do. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very passionate about everything that they do um, and they're willing to fight for themselves, whether it's you know, ask a ref about a call or even come into the huddle. They've been using the huddle in a really great way and encouraging each other and saying, hey, let's try this instead yeah. um, and really using that time to help them. That's great. Uh, a bit of a uh, strange week this week. Um, the, the Montezuma game that was uh, scheduled earlier in the week had to be canceled due to a, an unexpected situation over in Montezuma. So you guys have a big layoff um, uh, over, over a little over a week. How have you been managing that um, without that kind of game atmosphere when you expected it to be? Um, so our hearts and prayers, you go out to Montezuma um, for that tragedy. Um, but we've been in the gym working just as hard, um, still in that mindset of who do we have next mm -hmm. and what do we need to do to get ready for that team. Mm -hmm. And so uh, give us a little bit of a, a, a picture on what's coming up next. Uh, you guys are, um, I think, at BCLUW, right? Um, what's sort of the scouting report for the next couple of games for, for the Trojans here? Um, we play... Um, three teams up there that aren't in our conference. So we play uh, BCLUW, North Polk, and Hudson. And then we do get to see Benton. So that'll be a nice um, scout out for when we actually have to play them in a conference game. And then next Tuesday, uh, Clear Creek and Mana, um, big matchup here at home. Um, how are you kind of getting the team ready um, for these uh, for these matchups? I know looking at that BCLUW tournament, there's some pretty heavy-duty teams coming there. Um, how are you kind of preparing this group or how are they preparing themselves for the level of competition to, to really kick off here in a couple, couple um, days? We've been running practice at a very high rate, so um, just getting to realize that, you know, they're not going to back down either. So we have to learn to play when we're tired even. Yeah. Um, we do have big comp – there's big competition at the BCLUW tournament mm -hmm. and with CCA, and we just go in knowing we have to play our game and not get stuck on necessarily – what are they doing? We're going to play our game. We're going to run our things. Um, and we're going to give it our all. Yeah. Uh, one really uh, nice program thing that South Tame is doing this Tuesday coming up at the CCA game, the a food drive. Kind of, Can you tell us a little bit about that, how that came together, some of the details on that? Um, we actually had a student bringing up, Aubrey Dozal. She had volunteered down at the food pantry. Um, so she brought it up that they were in need of some things. Mm -hmm. So we got together and she created a poster. Um, so really to help those community members out. Um, so we're putting on that food drive. All right. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for the time, Coach. Uh, best of luck to you and the Trojans this weekend. And we'll be excited to, uh, to catch up with you on game day on Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
All right, we're back live from the STC Roundhouse. Darvin Graham and Hunter White with you here as we're about 10 minutes away, 10, 11 minutes away from the first serve between South Tama and Clear Creek Amana. We're just going to jump in and get, get a look at these two teams, first starting with the visiting team. The Clear Creek Amana Clippers so far coming into this season are 14-0. They're ranked number one in Class 4A. They were a state runner-up last year in 2022. Took a loss in the championship game to Cedar Rapids Xavier. However, they are returning all seven of their starters from their state runner-up team last season. So a fully loaded CCA team coming in amidst a very competitive WAMAC conference. It's going to be a tough one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, they, and they've already seen some ranked competition, just kind of going through some notable matchups that they have faced this year. Uh, and they're, they're so far uh, undefeated. So a win against 14th ranked Dallas Center Grimes. They're a 4A team. Um, a 2-0 win against 11th ranked 3A West Liberty. A 2-0 win against 10th ranked 3A team Anamosa. Another 2-0 win against 5th ranked Edgewood Colesburg. So those were the ranked matchups that CCA had. Looking back at the historical matchups between South Tama and Clear Creek Amanda, it has been the epitome of one-sided. It has been a entirely Clear Creek Amanda conversation through the last 10 to 15 years. So far, as far as quick stats goes back, we have a 21 wins, 21 game win streak against the South Tama Trojans for the Clear Creek Amanda Clippers. The last time STC won a set against CCA was early in the season in 2020 during Saturday tournament play. Taking a look down the roster for the CCA Clippers, they are led by senior All-Stater Bliss Beck. She stands 6'2", she's a middle hitter. She leads the team in kills with 109 kills. Also the third ranked Class 4A kills leader with 109, as I said. She's also third in the state in kill efficiency, just over, sitting just over 500 on kill efficiency. So if you think over 50% of her kills are going down for a point, at least they have so far this season. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, that's senior middle hitter Bliss Beck. And then in the back row, it's senior libero Meg Berkland. She's a, let's see here if I can get this, ranked fifth in Class 4A with 117 digs. And she was a second team All-Stater last season in 2022. Other hitters on the front line to look out for, Avery, Avery Lower. She's one of the younger uh, weapons for the Clippers this season. Standing 5'11", she's an outside hitter. Next in the kills category with 74. And then Sam Schrag, a senior uh, middle hitter, outside hitter, standing 5'9". She's got 55 kills. Beck also leads the blocks category. Schrag, uh, Schrag next with 14. And then Meg Berkland leading in digs. From the service line, Kennedy Wood, a senior setter and defensive specialist, leads her team with 19 aces from the service line. And then several other players with 10 aces so far this season. Looking at the STC Trojans, we'll get your starters here in a moment, but just kind of going through some season leaders. Gloria Mullen leads the team in kills with 44 kills. Next up is Macy Welsh, the junior middle hitter. She has 37 kills. And then the outside hitter, junior Jeanette Cervantes, with 33 kills. On the defensive side, Macy Welsh leads the team with 19 blocks. Right behind her is senior Kaylee Keene with 18 blocks, both middle hitters. In the digs category, it's senior captain and libero, Natalie Meek. She's got 53 digs on the season, leading her team by a wide margin. Right behind her is Ashley Finch with 31 and Gloria Mullen with 21. And from the service line, Gloria Mullen has led the team in aces so far. She did last season as well. She does again so far this year. She has eight aces from the service line. I believe if, uh, if memory serves correctly, Skyla Beck also had a pretty successful 2022 season was kind of a a serving specialist for the Trojans last year. She's the setter this year for, for the Trojans. So we'll see how, how her season kind of shapes up. 
Last season, the Trojans finished 12 and 23 and in last place in the WAMAC West Conference with an 0 and 6 conference record. The Trojans bring a large senior class that will step up to fill holes at several starting positions. As we mentioned, junior Skyla Beck will take over the setting duties after the departure of Captain Molly Wobeater from last season. 2023 Captain Natalie Meek will also uh, slide into the into the libero position this season, taking over for 2022 senior Cassandra Klosterman. And on the front line, middle hitter Macy Welsh, Kaylee Keene, and outside hitters Gloria Mullen and Jeanette Cervantes. I think Welsh, Mullen, and Cervantes each saw pretty significant varsity time in and out, not always starting, but, but a lot of varsity action last season. They're back again this year, but the departure of, of two uh, key hitters up front, it was Courtney Babinet and Ashlyn Kriegel graduating after last year, and then Kaylee Laughlin was anticipated to be with South Tama this year. She has since transferred over to Belle Plain and is playing with the Plainsmen this season. And so Mullen now, a 2023 team captain, returns as the leader behind the serving line with a team high 30 aces last season. Welsh will follow up on a breakout sophomore season where she was only one off the team high total in blocks as a sophomore. She's still a junior as well as a top three server from behind the line. And that's kind of your look at your STC Trojans. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we will have our captain's interview with STC captain Gloria Mullen. All right, today we are uh, getting to know some of our STC volleyball captains. Uh, can you start out, tell us your name, tell us your grade, and the position you play for the volleyball team? I'm Gloria Mullen, and I'm a senior and an outside hitter. Awesome. How long have you been playing volleyball, and then how long have you been at the outside hitter position? I've been playing volleyball since first grade, and I've been an outside hitter since my sophomore year. What, what do you like most about the sport of volleyball, um, and, and how have you kind of come to uh, enjoy the, the hitter position itself? Um, I really took on the hitter position kind of recently, mm -hmm. but as soon as I started it, it was, it's been my favorite position so far, and I kind of just went with it, and I put my all into it, and I tried my hardest. What position were you at previously, and, and how has the, the experience been different now that you're kind of um, on the front line uh, on the outside? Um, I was a setter in the beginning, like my freshman year, and I think it helped me to like appreciate setters and like everything they do. They're getting touches on every single ball, mm -hmm. and without them, like I can't be doing my job. Right. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your family. Introduce us to your family, who you got at home, um, and how they have impacted you as a volleyball player. My dad is Travis Mullen, and my mom is Hannah Mullen, and I have a sister who's a freshman, and she is Sylvia Mullen. And ever since I was little, they just really pushed me to try my hardest in sports. And um, they just know that I really love the sport. And so they always come and cheer me on and just support me throughout it. Do you have any pets? Tell us about those. I do. I have one dog. His name is Linford. We call him Lenny. And then I have a cat, and his name is Forrest. Awesome. If you, if you can think about life lessons and, and the sport of volleyball or any, or any high school sports that you play, uh, can you think of any life lessons that, that volleyball has, has taught you? Um, volleyball, I always say, like, practice how you want to play because if you're practicing sloppy and you're practicing slow, then that's how you're going to play on the court as well. Uh, you guys just got started with your season. You had a, a Saturday tournament. What were your thoughts kind of following uh, the, the games that you played um, on, on Saturday this past week? Um, going into the tournament, we knew that the teams that were going to be really hard, really difficult. They were all bigger schools than us. Um, I think we went into it with a good mindset, though, and we really pushed hard, and we were able to keep up with them for the most part. And I think we're just starting to realize, like, our potential and, like, how we can all play well together. Yeah. What are some of your goals for the season? Um, what do you kind of hope to improve on or where do you hope to be at the end of this volleyball season? I really hope this year that we can get a conference win. Mm -hmm. And I just think this year we are playing a lot better together and we all are really getting along. And when you get along on and off the court, it really helps how you play. Yeah. Uh, do you have any superstitions around your sport, either before a game, during a game, uh, anything you have to do when you kind of it's time for volleyball? 
Surprisingly, no, I don't really. No. no. What is a what does a game day look like for for you or for for a typical high school volleyball player? Kind of what's the schedule? What's the routine like? Uh, well, for a home game. Um, Varsity normally comes, we come in early, we're refing for the JV and Frosh games, and then we have about an hour in the locker room to get ready and like start getting hyped up so that we're ready for the game and ready to go. Away games, um, normally we have to do have to leave school early when we get on the bus, and Varsity will watch Frosh and JV and cheer them on until it's time to get ready. All right. Last question, what advice do you have for younger kids, younger South Tama Trojans as they're figuring out what activities they want to do? Um, what, what advice do you have for, for our younger Trojans? I just say always try your best no matter what you're doing, no matter what sport you're in. And also you can always try different sports. Like I did soccer one year and track the other year, just figuring out what I enjoyed and what I liked and what I didn't. And it right. really helped me. Awesome. Well, best of luck this season and thanks for the time. Thank you. Welcome back in. We're live from the STC Roundhouse, just moments away from first serve here between STC and CCA. We'll first go through the starters in uh, no particular order here for the Clear Creek and Mana Clippers. Libero will be number four, senior Meg Berkland. Number six, middle hitter, Bliss Beck. Number seven, sophomore setter, Emily Henderson. Number nine, sophomore outside hitter, Soraya Sherman. Number 15, senior middle hitter, Sam Schrag. Number 17, senior outside hitter, Addison Gislason. And rounding out the lineup for the Clippers, number 22, sophomore outside hitter, Avery Lauer. For your STC Trojans. At the outside hitter position, it is junior Jeanette Cervantes. She stands five foot nine. In the middle, it will be senior five foot 10 middle hitter, Kaylee Keene. And junior, number eight, five foot ten middle hitter, Macy Welsh. And it's outside hitter, senior captain, Gloria Mullen. In the back row, number three, senior defensive specialist, Mary Kate Frakes. The setter for the Trojans will be number four, junior, Skyla Beck. And the libero, senior captain, number 12, Natalie Meek. There's your starters for the STC Trojans. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with the first serve here from the Roundhouse.
All right, welcome back live from the STC Roundhouse. Moments away from first serve here, South Tama versus Clear Creek Amana. Hunter, how are you feeling going into this one? This is exciting. This is exciting for South Tama, but these girls on the Clear Creek Amana side are just tall, they're long, and they are very exceptional at what they do. Yeah. So it's going to be a tall order for our South Tama Trojans, but there's one thing that South Tama has that not a whole lot of other schools have, and that's heart. And yeah. they got a, a just a grit to play, and I'm looking forward for South Tama to make sure that they have to play and win for every point tonight for right. Clear Creek. And, and you know, for, for all the firepower that Clear Creek Amanda is bringing back, a, a, a not unexperienced lineup for the Trojans either as several players coming back um, into the South Tama starting lineup um, that had plenty of experience last year too. So I think I think um, the trajectory is up for, for the STC Trojans too. So Absolutely. So here to start, we've got Natalie Meek, the libero coming on to start the rotations. Yeah, I mean, when I was watching the JV matchup set up, we were able to split them, you know, 2-1. And we actually, that middle matchup was really good. We were able to get a five-point split differential, both on 12-7 yeah. and seven and 16-11. So it, it looks good for our up-and-comers, but varsity has got to do it today. So in the front right now for the Trojans, we have Welsh and Beck and Frakes. Serving is the libero, Meg Berkland, starting things off for the Clippers. First serve underway. Welsh into the block, ricochets back out of bounds. Point, Clear Creek. So the Clippers start first, and Berkland will keep her serve going. Straight down the middle, received by Mullen, pops it into the air. Little tip over by Frakes. Kept alive, Beck shot from the middle, into the net. Point South Tama. Welsh did a good job at just reading that play right to the middle player of uh, Henderson, and that was read perfectly. So here's Mary Kate Frakes, first serve for the Trojans. Pulled out by the back line of the Clippers. Again, back into the net, bounces around, saved by the Clippers. Now here's Cervantes, over the block, and into the middle. Point Trojans, Berkland can't get to it fast enough, and the Trojans out to a 2-1 lead. What a way to start off. Cervantes hit it right in the middle court, right where no one was. Just a nice little floater right in the middle of the court. Frakes again with the Trojans leading 2-1. Popped up by Lauer. Little fake out by Sherman. Cervantes into the double block. Beck. And now Cervantes again. Floats it over this time. Gislason keeps it alive. Back row attack. And it's good for Avery Lauer, the sophomore outside hitter. Scores a point from the back row, and it's tied 2-2. Two to two. Breaks to the bench. Millie Mathis Henley into the game for the Trojans. Here's Gislason serving for the Clippers. And that was Keen, I believe. No, hold on. That was Welsh. Yep. Just a very staunch defense, this front line for CCA. Yep. We're, we're out. We, we're at a height disadvantage at every position across the front line. Absolutely. So some, an uphill work. So far, the Trojans have found, found some angles and, and hanging in there. Yeah, and there's Lauer from the left corner. Rockets one into the back row, and it's good for a point. Four to two, Clippers now leading. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a timing thing for our front girls since they're at such a height disadvantage. they got to know when that kill's going to come over. Gislason still serving for the Clippers. Meek pops it up. Cervantes through the block and good. Jeanette Cervantes has been dangerous from that left corner. Yeah, well, I think I, that's her third kill, maybe, if I, I don't have it tallied. It's, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's two or three, but yeah. still, and they're going to call her back in, or call her out. She's going to take a little sit down, because excellent, well-deserved sit out. And here's the serve for the Trojans. And the attack from Sherman, received by the Trojans. 
Mullen over the block, popped up by Berkland. Tip over by Beck. The dig and a whistle. And what? it looks like we've got maybe four touches. Uh, no, I didn't catch the I didn't catch the violation there, but it was a. a I think it was like a net violation. Okay. I think we we touched uh, touched the net a little bit too much there when we were coming back down. But so five three Clippers leading. As Kennedy Wood into the game now serving for the Clippers, and a whistle before Mary Kate Frakes can get her. That was a double hit on the side of STC. There we go. Yep. Just kind of keeping our girls on the back edge. They just keep applying that pressure, and we just can't get a break. So a three-point lead. Wood to serve again. Squeaks it over the net, and Henley, Mathis Henley can't quite dive to pop it up, and it goes down for a point, seven to three. Nice little run here by senior Kennedy Wood. This time, long, out of bounds. Trojans ball. Yeah, so far, hopefully this could be a break that we need as uh, Welsh is going to go back to serve. Macy Welsh received by Berkland. Nice double block there by Mullen and Keene. Mullen into the block, diving out of bounds, still live on the CCA side. Beck setting up Welsh. The attack by Mullen. Now here's Beck, little floater. Trickery, it spins on the net, still alive. Mathis Henley keeps it going. Nice back and forth here between these two teams. Out of bounds, Trojans point. What a nice volley. That was really getting kind of close over there at that edge, but a good heads up play, able to keep the hands under Both it. Both teams had to extend themselves that time, and we had for a pretty entertaining exchange there. Five to seven, Trojans trail. Gisselson with that tries dig. To pass to the side, and it will be another point for South Tama. Trojans pulled within one. We're on a three-point score uh, run right now, so hopefully keep up the momentum here. Macy Walsh still at the line, right at Berkland. She kind of pushes it forward. There's a big shot by Emily Henderson, and that will stop the scoring for the Trojans. Henderson, an emphatic kill into the back row. Natalie Meek coming on. Macy Walsh to the bench for South Tama. Berkland also going to the bench for the Clippers. Here's Beck, the senior. Rolls one over the net. Keene tips it over. Lauer passes it over to the South Tama side. Throw over by Mullen. And it's going to be Henderson into the back row. It's too long. Point South Tama. I just want to make a point that Mathis Henley, Henley on her dig was exactly what South Tama needs to keep doing here. Good effort. Mathis Henley to the bench. And Mary-Kate Frakes into the game for the Trojans. Here's Skyla Beck serving for STC. Pass over by Schrag. Big shot there by Mathis, excuse me, by Mary-Kate Frakes, and it's a point for the Trojans. That had just enough spin on it. That was a very nice placement there. We've seen a lot of action. The low, low balls going across mm -hmm. the net, kind of spinning, and, and yeah, it's been uh, some exciting play here so far. This time it's Lauer from the right side, kind of splitting the defenders, getting a point down, keeping the Clippers in control here. Nine to eight, Lauer's point, and she'll go to the line. And the dump over by Bis, uh, excuse me, no, that's not Beck, it's uh, Sam Schrag, the senior middle hitter, right even, there to just kind of shut it down. Yeah, even though she stands 5'9", she's got some long arms, yep. really good playing that. Beck setting up Keene. Keene dumps it into the middle, diving is Berkland. And a double hit called against CCA, another point to the Trojans. They're hanging in there this first set. And you got to appreciate the heart. You got to love the crowd. Their student section really kind of supporting the Trojans at the moment. And here we have Gloria Mullen, South Tama's aces leader at the line. Big shot there by Gislason. Pulled out by the South Tama back row. And it'll be another long 
Another attack that goes long. This time it's Emily Henderson going cross court. We're, we're tied at 10. The last time that we were tied was on 3-3, so yep. excellent job to stay into this one. Mullen sends it over. Meek to Keen. Excuse me, Cervantes goes into the double block that time. Now Lauer, straight down the middle. Dug out by Beck. Skyla Beck, yep. And Berkland can't hold on in the corner. That's our first lead change of the game, Darvin. And a timeout called by CCA. Trojans giving him something to think about here in this first set. Man, how about that? What an exciting first set here between South Tama and CCA. And you know, that's coming in as a, as a big underdog. You kind of have that that mental thing uh, mm -hmm. to play to play with a little bit as far as if you're if the team, especially coming down an hour drive down from mm -hmm. uh, from CCA and got to be ready to go. And yeah. so far, the Trojans are kind of hanging in there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just our back line has done so well with those digs. I know Mathis Henley had a big dig. Mullen had a several good digs there in that first set. And then they always keep on feeding it to Cervantes, who's been getting, what, three kills now? Yep, yep. So just excellent job passing it to our playmakers and getting it to our defensive specialists yep, when absolutely. we need to. All right, coming out of this timeout from CCA, on the court for the Trojans, Mullen still at the service line. Skyla Beck, Mary-Kate Frakes, Kaylee Keene, Natalie Meek, and Jeanette Cervantes on the court for the Trojans. Here's Mullen to serve. Still first set action. Right down the middle. Tip over by Schrag, and that'll score a point for the Clippers. Kennedy Wood will go to the bench. Into the game for the Clippers is number nine, Soraya Sherman. And to the line will go Henderson. Henderson right at Meek. She pops it up. Mullen behind the back pass over onto the CCA side. Here's Cervantes. Strong shot, just a little too much mustard on it, and it goes long. But that's exactly the kind of play you want to get. You know, feed it to Cervantes. They're weak on that left side. That's what you just got to keep doing. It's just not going to work 100% of the time. Henderson's second serve. Beck setting up. Frakes. Here's a big shot from Sherman. Long and out of bounds. And so, Clear Creek and Mana, to say they're struggling is not correct. They're still, we still got a tie game here, but some of the points that they've missed have come on just locating that range and, and dialing in their shots to not, not go out of bounds. There's a yes, big cross court exactly. shot in the corner. Mullen able to get that dig in. Here's Cervantes. Henderson passes it over. Diving save by Ashley Finch. Nice dig there by Natalie Meek, keeping it alive for the Trojans. Backcourt attack from Mullen. Tip over, and it will fall good for the Clippers. Sam Schreg finally splits the South Dama defense, but you gotta love the, the effort there. STC kind of fighting through several different attacks. and Yeah, that's the one thing, is that these prolonged uh, rallies are just really intriguing to watch. Yeah. Excellent job. Here's Berkland, the libero serving. And now Bliss Beck scores a point, just elevates, throws it down, and the Clippers leading two by two. Yeah, we can't let the frustration get us. I see some of the body language. They're getting a little frustrated after that tie, but still only down two points, still very doable. Berkland, one of the serving leaders for the Clippers. She's at the line, just beyond the frame there to the right side. Berkland, cross court. It goes long and out of bounds. Nice job there by Jeanette Cervantes to kind of read the trajectory, let it go, and that'll give South Tama back the ball here with a one-point deficit. Mary-Kate Frakes at the line. Frakes right to Lauer. Berkland setting up Beck. Beck with a soft touch, received by Meek. Cervantes hard into the block, and an excellent defensive stop there by Beck and Sherman. 
Yeah, so just, just the wall. way that CCA was just set up on that right side with that timing. I don't know if the ball carried too much. Yep. Maybe we got to start serving it over to the left side. Two-point lead for the Clippers. First set action. Gislason to serve from the right side. Serve received by Mullen. And that was Mathis Henley on the one kind of off-balance shot there. Good idea, but it just goes long and out of bounds. Now yeah. three-point lead for the Clippers. Now Gisselson back to hit. Received by Mathis Henley. Now Cervantes over the block. And it'll be back again from the middle. She's got that shot whenever she wants it. We haven't seen a lot of power hitting from, from Beck so far. No. She's really mixed it up um, in, in terms of Kind of putting the ball up. Yeah, and, she, and going she, for the fastball. It's kind of been a lot of different things. Yeah. And again, another one served long. Just listen, serve long and out of bounds. And now Ashley Finch, the senior defensive specialist, coming into the game. Jeanette Cervantes will rotate out, and Finch will go to the line. Trailing three. Finch's serve received by Gislason. Henderson to set up. Lauer over the defenders. Welsh, a big hit from the middle, and it's good. Really nice job splitting those defenders there. Even though the timing was perfect, yeah. just split them right down the middle. Can't stop that. A two point lead for CCA. Finch on her second serve. Henderson to Beck. Trojans scrambling to keep it alive. Several Trojans went to the court there, but it will fall for a point. CCA, again, leading by three is Kennedy Wood coming on to serve for the Clippers. Serve received by Finch. Big swing there by Welsh. Saved by Gislason. Lauer to Meek. Pops it up high in the air. Beck down the middle. Good receive there by Finch. Mullen over the top, and it's good. The attack from Gloria Mullen on the corner. Drops a point in. Again, it's just one of those things where you got to keep serving it to your rock stars there on those kills, and it's been working so far. Macy Walsh at the line. Two-point lead for CCA. That's the first service error we've seen, I think, on either side outside yeah. of Outside of the couple out of bounds, we haven't. This is the first ball that has been shot into the net so far. Yeah, both ladies on both sides have been doing a really good job trying to keep it in play for most of the time. Now Beck to serve with a three-point lead still. Keen, long and out of bounds. It's a four-point lead. I think this has been our longest lead so far. Yep. And Bliss Beck to serve again. Diving attempt there by Skyla Beck, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, that just Five wasn't a ready, ready set there, so. And now a timeout called by the Trojans. They'll talk things over. But yeah, we've still kind of been in this. I mean, there's only been two lead changes, you know, one for STC and then another one back to the Clippers, but we've been tied four times so far in this first set, and right. it wasn't until the later half where the Clippers started pulling away, so. Yep, South Tama has not, has not shrunk uh, against the sort of mismatch with, with CCA here, at least in this first set. We've got <laughs> a long way to go. But, Absolutely. Uh, but you gotta, you got to love the effort, and um, especially, you know, knowing that you're coming up against a team you haven't beaten in a long time that has undefeated and is coming off of a state run. All the things yeah. that could make it difficult from a mental standpoint to, to be ready for a game. And I think we've seen a, a team in South Tama that has been ready. Still, I think, mismatched, but mentally they're, they seem to be there. That's good to see. Yeah, absolutely. They're not counting themselves out of this one bit. So I'm just really looking forward to see how they're going to change this up, especially going into the later sets here. and. Hopefully we can maybe get something going on that offense. I know Cervantes and Mullen's been doing a great job so far. It'll be Bliss Beck to serve after the timeout for South Tama. CCA trying to close out this first set here. Mathis Henley receives the serve. It shanks off to the left. 
And that'll make it 22 to 16. Trojans looking for an answer here as the Clippers have kind of pulled away off the back of a couple kills and some penalties. Some kind of violation there. I yeah, didn't. it's uh, illegal alignment, so I don't think we were kind of lined up properly over on the side. Yep. And so he's kind of talking to talking to Mullen here, the yeah, captain. It's, a, it's always one of those things where, like, the back line member can't get up past so far as the front line hitter. And, you know, when they're trying to do those rotations, it's kind of a miscommunication at that point. And so the Trojans kind of finish talking with the official there, and Beck will still keep her serve going. Keen right into the block of Sam Schrag. And Schrag just shut it down. She sniffed that out. And just one-on-one -on -one, kind of dunked it over. Game point here, 24-17. Yeah, it's really staunch defense right now for Clear Creek, so hopefully we can find some holes. And that'll do it. Set one goes to the Clippers. We'll be back after a break. Thanks for being with us. Welcome back live from the STC Roundhouse. We're at the set two break here as South Tama lost that first set. 25 to 17 was the, the final there. And we go into set number two. After a spirited effort by the Trojans, I don't know, what, what did you see in that in that second, uh, that first set uh, from South Tama here, Hunter? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our back line did a great job at getting those digs because they got, even though we haven't really seen much power hitting, but. CCA has been hitting some kind of offhand floaters there right in the center. And we've usually had someone either Meek or Frakes just in the back line just ready for it. But also for our points, we were we had a lead change. We were ahead 11-10 yeah. there in sort of kind of later of the first set. It wasn't until about 13 points where the Clippers started pulling away. But, hey, we had four ties with two lead changes up until that very end of the first set. So... Very spirited, like you mentioned, Darvin. So we're going to start this second set with Mary-Kate Frakes serving for the Trojans. And here's Beck from the left corner. She will score first for the Clippers, and they get out to the first lead of the, of the set. Mathis Henley will come in for Mary-Kate Frakes. And Gislason to serve for the Clippers. From the, from the right side. Serve received there by Meek. He gets poked out of bounds. No, oh, four touches is what I see there. That must have been in really quick succession. Yeah. I, didn't I, thought, I thought we were getting that, but I guess not. Oh, okay. 
Maybe it was a, a net violation. That I, I okay. might have my That's a, my penalty wrong there. There's an ace by Gislason as she dials it up against Mathis Henley, and it kind of goes to the court. That angle there, three to zero, Clippers in control here in this in this second set. Little tip over by Welsh, and it's going to be Beck and Lauer. Yeah, at that point, you know, kind of with, if you're going to do the floater, you got to make sure that you get it past whatever the apex is of the, the defender. So it's one of those things you learn to practice. And Gisselson again to serve from the right side. Cervantes receives. This time Welsh gets it over the block. Berkland, tip over by Beck, and it will be a whistle and a point. Looks like a uh, illegal hit. Interesting. Into that the game for the, the Trojans is Ashley Finch. Cervantes will go to the bench. And Finch to serve. Right down the middle at Berkland, the libero. Henderson, and it falls good for, for Clear Creek Amana. Wow, that was just a really good play there from CCA. They set it up there for Beck, but then they sent it right back over to Henderson who got that kill. That's just one of those college level plays. And looks like we've got Kennedy Wood serving for the Clippers. And double hit, double hit there called against South Tama. So some stops and starts here in this second set have really kind of got the pace all out of whack. And, mm -hmm. and the Clippers have been the beneficiary. They're leading six to one. Wood right down the middle. Mathis Henley digs it out. Beck to Mullen. Gets it over the block. Berkland setting up Lauer. Long out of bounds. Points out Tama. All right, hopefully this can be a momentum shifter for our girls. South Tama student section kind of waking up here a little bit as Macy Welsh goes to the line for STC. Welsh right in the middle. Drops it in. Gislason. Fastball right at Finch. Here at Mullen. Attack from the left corner. Ricochets out of bounds. Point South Tama. That'll be a kill for Gloria Mullen, the STC captain. Yeah, just got to keep on serving it up with that heat, splitting those defenders. They'll be able to get it done here. South Tama trailing by three. Couple points here though after, after a five point deficit. Beck over the top of the defenders. Keen, I think just kind of mistimed the, the swing there. Yep. And it falls right down in front of her. 7-3, Berkland to serve for the Clippers. Mathis Henley sends it over to Gislason. Lauer in the middle. Trojans diving to save it. And, they and Gloria Mullen kind of talking with the official there who thought it was, who thought Mathis Henley got a hand and, and dug it out, but nobody's going to, uh, the case is not going to be hurt, it doesn't, doesn't seem no. like, so it'll, it'll be a point for the, for the Clippers. Good effort there. Meek yeah, went absolutely. to the ground, and then Mathis Henley looked like she was underneath of it, but it'll be called a point for the Clippers. A little trouble at the net there, and another point as CCA quickly out to a 9-3 lead. Yeah, I just don't know if that, that pancake that they were trying to do, maybe the ball hit the ground a little bit too much. I yeah. just, it's one of those things. I, I just don't know. Berkland. Up the middle. Nice dig. Dig there by Mathis Henley. Henderson setting up Wood, and the shot by Gislason is good right along the back line. 10 3 now the score into the second set. Yeah, just like you kind of mentioned earlier, just because kind of been off and on with this sort of kind of momentum shifting and the pace of play, and it's really taken everything out of clockwork. Nice run here by Meg Berkland, the senior libero. She's serving again. Now Mullen into two defenders. Bounces out of bounds, point CCA. 
South Tame is going to call timeout. Coach Rowie will have a word with her players. Of course, STC head coach Sam Cantonwine out with uh, out on maternity leave. Say congratulations to to her and her husband Dave and their family as they're celebrating their their first little one. Yeah. And so, Coach Ashley Rowie, the interim head coach for STC this year, she's assisted by Amy Dolash and Emily Chima, who've been helping out and uh, working with the sub varsity teams. Yeah, excellent job from Coach Rowie being able to step up in something like that and uh, being able to take these girls, you know, take the reins in the meantime yeah, while uh, Sam takes care of her baby. So, And it's not uh, not like it's a small team or a small right. pro. I mean, this is, right. a, this is a kind of featured uh, fall program for STC with mm -hmm. a lot of kids, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that kind of have to, a lot of travel, weekend travel. So... Big effort there by the STC coaches to kind of keep things moving forward for the Trojans this year. There's a kill by Gloria Mullen on the right side. She's fired up. And here's the student section back on their feet, so hopefully they can get a rally going. You can tell that frustration from that, that uh, call that didn't go <laughs> South Tama's way, mm -hmm. still wearing on the shoulder a little bit for, for South Tama, and the, and the energy um, able to be picked up by Mullen. So here's, here's Skyla Beck serving for the Trojans. They're down 11-4. And it'll be out of bounds. The shot by Sam Schrag is no good. Making it 11-6. 11-5, excuse me. And there's an ace by Skyla Beck. Just found a weird little angle yeah. on that left, left rail and lower it, unable to, to dig it out. No, I just don't, I don't think she was ready for that. No. Here's Beck again. This time down the middle, CCA caught sleeping. They just weren't weren't awake on that one, and nobody nobody dives to the middle. And that'll be the second straight ace for South Tama Junior Skyla Beck. Eleven to seven now. Beck to Gislason. Now lower over the def the defenders, but actually not. It's not going to be over the defenders. She tried to tip it over, mm -hmm. but it just kind of rainbowed and then went straight down in front of the net. So that'll be another point for the Trojans. They're back to within within three. Lower, big shot into the block and this time it falls. Point CCA. But nice nice rebound effort here by Yeah, absolutely. By South we, Tama. we went on a four point run there and that was that had some inklings of hope right there. Lauer, cross court serve. Trojans bouncing it around trying to keep it alive. Frake sends it over. This time it's it's Schrag. And it'll be a carry, I think, was the call there. Yeah. Against South Tama. And so that'll make it 13 to 8. South Tama needing to make up some ground here if they're gonna keep this set competitive. Mm. Kill error there by Mullen, who fired into the net. Yeah, it's CCA. just one of those things where she didn't quite hit it at the apex, didn't hit it with the hand straight up, and just couldn't quite make the connection. Lauer again from the corner. And Mullen, I think unsure about what she wanted to do there. Mm -hmm. and the ball kind of arrived before she decided if she was going to go underhand with it, or and it was maybe just a weird angle, too. So another point for CCA, but... Lauer serves right into the net, so the service error will give the ball back to, give the serve back to South Tama, and now that'll bring up Gloria Mullen. Yeah, that, that was the only second service error we've seen all game, so, right. so far, clean serving so far. Here's Mullen, the senior captain. Right down the middle to Berkland, she pops it up. Big hit there by Gislason, and it goes long and out of bounds. Strong start by CCA, and now South Tama has pushed their way into the second set a little bit, but yeah. still a bit of a climb to go. Yeah. Can't count these girls out. Lauer pops it up. It was Henderson diving out of bounds to save it, but it does finally hit the court, and that will be a point for the Trojans. I mean, for the most part, we've been coming back from, like, four-point deficit, so yeah. we're, yep. we're doing a really good job here. Mullen 
right at Berkland, and she kind of had to step back, and it goes behind her a little bit, but Clippers save it. Tip over by Schrag. Here's Meek setting up Mullen. She goes right to Wood, who digs it out, gets it over to Henderson. Frakes kind of bottled up in the corner. She gets it over. And a whistle. It'll be a double, double, hit. double hit against South Tama. Uh, that's just got to be frustrating, you know, after a nice rally like that. Yeah. I mean, Meek had a really good dig there right in the middle of the rally. Just yep. one of those unfortunate things. And here's Emily Henderson, the sophomore, serving. Well, Serve goes out of bounds. Point for the Trojans. Macy Welsh, the middle hitter, will come in, giving South Tama some of their height back in the, in the front line. Kaylee Keene to the bench. Natalie Meek serve into the net. So service errors on both team, both sides here yep. in this second set. It was a pretty clean first set, but we've seen a little more, a little more of those miscues here in set number two. So that'll be I think Shrag. It's Shrag, yeah. yeah. Big swing there by Frakes. Picked up by the front line of the Clippers offense, and they send it back for a point, 18 to 12. Yeah, South Tama just wasn't quite ready for that return. I mean, you got you can't count them out with this uh, state runner-up team. That they're always going to send it back over. Right. Shreg straight down the middle. Again, long. Point to the Trojans. Looks like Berkland's going to come in for Shreg. And now Mary-Kate Frakes will be at the line. Senior specialist, defensive specialist for the Trojans. And she... Struggles to get it over. Making it 19 to 13. I wonder if that has to be a fatigue thing that we're starting to get all could these be. service errors. Yep, ab absolutely could be. Now it'll be Gesselson from the right corner. That's an ace. The ace from Gesselson kind of just dropped it right behind the back line. It didn't have quite enough to to get the out of bounds call and making it 19 14 excuse me 20 to 13 Gisselson to Meek sends it high in the air Beck now Cervantes keeping it alive and Clear Creek Amanda has just been overpowering South mm -hmm. Tama on some of these attacks you kind of look at at the South Tama bodies, and we're having to kind of collapse and mm -hmm. kind of get out of system more than we want to be. Absolutely. And you see a lot of upright bodies on the on the Clear Creek side. Big swing there by Macy Welsh. Gisselson saves it lower into the middle. Beck keeps it alive. A dig from the net from Cervantes, and it'll go out of bounds. Point to the Clippers, 22-13. And timeout, Coach Rowley will talk it over with the Trojans. Yeah, it's just one of those things that I think it's starting to be like a size differential kind of a thing. Right. We're gonna have to start jumping up higher and it's just, you know, gassing our girls just a little bit more. Definitely the same thing with like those rotations. It's definitely one of those things where I see where some of our girls just don't know who's supposed to hit the ball next or what the rotation is or yeah. who's supposed to be able to get that shot. Cause I've seen, you know, some shots from Berklin and Gisselson just, just float on over. And yeah. it's like, no one really knows who needs to get that ball, but. And maybe some mental focus kind of playing into that too. If mm -hmm. you, you got a, a lot of uh, intersecting decisions that have to be made and and kind of things you have to think about simultaneously and when frustration kind of enters the equation that can kind of kind of get you out of focus a little bit All right Gisselson now back to serve for CCA received by Meek just a nice little hand floater over there for Welsh and we're able to get the point Welsh drops it in Gisselson came streaking in from that far right corner and it's a good effort, but it'll be a point for STC. Now Skyla Beck, she had two aces the last time out. 
And, well, maybe will it be? No, it will not be. So Beck, Beck was ready to go, but it was not her turn to serve. So it's going to be <laughs> Ashley Finch instead. Finch cross court just out of bounds. Point to the Clippers. Now 24-14, and we have game point for set number two. See, and this is going to be Wood back to serve. Kennedy Wood dropping it in to Finch. Big swing there by Welsh into the block. Mullen from the corner. Goes out of bounds. Okay. And that'll be point CCA. No, well. Nope, that was point, point South, South Tama. Tama. They motioned to, to the Clippers, but. So the Trojans stay alive here, but they're down 10. Mathis Henley to Meek, passes it over to the CCA side. Big shot there by Bis Bliss Beck. And that'll do it for set number two. Trojans drop the second, 25 to 14. We will be back after a moment with the third set. Don't go anywhere, you're listening to Trojan Country. All right, we're back live from the STC Roundhouse. Set number two goes to the CCA Clippers by a score of 25 to 14. Quick broadcast update for you. We'll be live from the from Trojan Field on Friday night. South Tama will host not the Knoxville Panthers in non-district play in week three. Both teams yet to, to win a game. And so it'll be a really interesting matchup to see how, how the Panthers kind of shape up this season and the South Tama can kind of answer the call after a couple of tough losses in yeah. week one and week two. Yeah, so I'm excited to see what this football team's got in store. I know we saw kind of inklings of a big pass play. We were able to get a first touchdown there, you know, from Weiss to Dolash there. So I'm excited to see what our football team has to offer. And, hey, someone has to win a game eventually, you know, to, uh, against Knoxville or South Tama. So... Hopefully looking forward to that matchup here on Friday. So you're on your screen, you're looking at Cade and Tim kind of getting this STC student section going. Boy, did these girls need it. There was a little yeah. bit of frustration in that second set, a lot more service errors, but hey, if I just want to, you know, highlight something here, Skyla Beck able to get two aces yeah. in quick succession. So definitely excellent job execution from the serve side for her. And that brings us to set number three. CCA has been dominant so far, but I, despite the score, you know, you see close to a double digit wins here in both of these, in the, it is in set two, close to a double digit win in set one. Mm -hmm. I don't think that tells the entire story as far as the effort that we've seen from South Tama. Just thinking about some other upset losses that I've seen the Trojans take in past years, a bit of a different vibe from yeah. what I've seen, at least. With the, the kids look engaged and and, um, and and kind of willing to meet the the challenge. So absolutely. Now Berkland, or uh, excuse me, yes, Berkland. Berkland Packard. serving for CCA on the court for the Trojans is Welsh, Cervantes, Meek, Mullen, and Beck, and Frakes. First point goes to the Trojans. The block there by Mary Kate Frakes drops it down and the Trojans leading one to zero. Yeah, I just kind of want to mention Darvin that, that it's just one of those things that definitely the body language is very positive still. Yeah, yeah, still with it. And you love to see that. Another point 
for STC. Yeah, so and, go ahead. Oh, well, just really thinking about the, the involvement of the student section, mm -hmm. um, having a, a big group of students right here, right on the court, mm -hmm. co you, compared to, you think about a football game, just the distance there. Mm -hmm. and that energy, I think, is really kind of helping South Tama stay in this thing as well, they're down two sets to zero. Absolutely. Here's Beck firing from the left corner. Dug out by Meek. Cervantes tries to go over the top. Gets blocked back into the South Tama side. Mullen, cross-court shot, it's good. Excellent job, kind of a setup play there. They're definitely calm, definitely collected. This is what we need to see from these STC girls. Up three, nothing. Mary-Kate Frakes still at the line for STC. Sends it over, dug out by Lower. And the angle of the shot by Beck to Meek. Uh, just just one of those. bounces hard off the off the forearms there, and it went went to the court for a point. Yeah, just definitely a miscalculation now with uh, Gitzelson back to serve. I don't have any any stats on our on our serving here, but I would say I think at the end of this thing, Gitzelson's going to have one of the better better nights from serve efficiency. Absolutely, she's been in. You know, there was maybe two or three that I seen her serve off wide on that yeah. right side, but otherwise it's just been right down the middle every single time. There was a dump over block and a point by Macy Welsh. That gets the ball back over to the South Tama Trojans. They lead four to one. Tip over by Sherman. Shot by Mullen, dug out by Berkland. Beck collapses the, de the defense. And South Tama unable to kind of get the defenders into the open spot. Four to two, the lead now for STC as the point goes to CCA. Yeah. Kennedy Wood in for the for the Clippers. STC just needs to find a way to get that floater midway. Find somebody in the back line to be close up for that. Mathis Henley receives the serve. Mullen into the block. Popped up by Gislason. Now on the CCA side. Tapped over by Sherman. Mathis Henley sends it over, but it's long and out of bounds. A one-point lead now for South Tama as they've start, started hot, but CCA has been consistent. Despite some misses here and there, they've kind of come back with points at every turn. So clear to see why they're the number one ranked class that team in Class 4A as they tie it up four to four off the shot. Yeah, you can definitely see there. just like, they are still into this and their body language has not changed at all. No, no, very even keeled. There's Mullen, little kill error there. Attack went a little low and into the net and that'll give the lead to CCA, five to four. Received by Meek there. Mullen throws it down into the middle for a point. Mullen's had a, a nice night here, kind of quietly building her kills throughout the second and, and, and third sets. It was Cervantes that came out hot in the first, but, mm -hmm. but Mullen has kind of consistently been pretty dangerous from that right corner side. Absolutely. There she is again, this time a little further back. Down the sideline, this time it's out of bounds. Yeah, definitely like to see. I mean, they're still kind of into this. Of course, we've only seen, you know, it's two ties still. It's still early, but we're still in this. Yeah. Now it'll be Beck to serve. Beck, the senior All-Stater. She's headed to Drake next year. Will play for the Bulldogs. And Drake's got a good program up there, so. Off balance shot by Schrag. Six to six. Brooklyn, the libero, comes in. Shreg to the bench. Skyla Beck serving for the Trojans. Beck goes right at Brooklyn, digs it out. Lauer from the corner, and she connects on a kill from the right side. And Avery Lauer going to be one to watch here. She's only a sophomore.
getting some valuable experience. Going with the team as a freshman to the state championship game. And here they are, kind of the number one team this season. There's a tip over and a point for the Trojans. Yeah, that was done by Keene. We haven't said her name at all, all yeah. tonight, but she's showing up here in the third. Gloria Mullen to serve for the SDC Trojans. We're tied at seven here in this third set. Mullen served, dug out by Berkland. Big swing by Henderson into the back line. Saved by Beck. A little jousting at the net there. Frakes and a couple defenders from the Clippers, and it will go against South Tama. Point to the Clippers. They lead by one. Yeah, that's another thing, too, that I've noticed is that our girls just can't quite get the spacing there up at the net. Just something that they'll need to practice on going forward. Served by Henderson. Received by Cervantes. She'll attack from the corner. And she finds a spot again along the, along the right sideline. Excellent fake out from Keen to Cervantes there. That's, that's wonderful pass play. Keen will go to the bench. Macy Walsh back into the game, middle hitter. Natalie Meek to serve. Gislason setting up Sherman from the corner. Beck saves it at the net. Passes it over to Lauer. Big swing by Sherman, and now it's alive on the Trojan side. Long pass there by Natalie Meek, and it goes out of bounds. I mean, we got inklings of what we really need to play. I want to see more of that pass play that we had with uh, uh, Keen and uh, Cervantes over there on that left-hand side. That was a really good kill. Berklin serving for the Clippers. They lead by one. Ball gets pushed over by Welsh. Now Gislason right at Cervantes, who keeps it alive. The shot by Gloria Mullen is going to go out of bounds and point to the Trojans. The kill for Mullen. Yeah, Lauer, Lauer was just not set up for that, and excellent job placement. Here's Mary Kay Frakes, the senior, serving for the Trojans. Serve dug out by Lauer, tipped over. Sherman Open with middle. that point, yep. yep. Little drop shot there, and Clippers keeping pace. Send over by Gislason. Right and the shot the there by Welsh. Ashley Finch will come into the game for Jeanette Cervantes, and Finch will go to the line. Still tied 10 to 10. Notice that we've been serve, uh, having Finch serve a lot more, and she's very consistent. She, she yeah. sends some heat down the line. Finch up the middle, right to Berkland. Lauer from the left corner, received by Meek. Here's Mullen, finding the corner, just threading the needle there. I don't, Mullen stuck that thing in the very last possible square inch in that far corner, and she gets it down for a kill. Excellent work there by Gloria Mullen. All right, Finch back to serve. Sherman, big shot into the block. Welsh and Mullen defend it, and they shut it down from the right corner. Point Trojans. 12-10 for STC in this third set. We've been really making a run of this. Definitely a momentum shift here. In South Tame, you, know, you can see kind of the, the vibe on the CCA side has, has maybe gotten to be a little disinterest, a little bit, let's get this thing wrapped up and get home. And South Tama has, has kind of responded and capitalized on that energy deficit and, and they're leading here. Right now with Sherman, out for and Woods coming in and back to serve. But definitely, like you said, definitely a tense situation now on the CCA bench. Here's Kennedy Wood serving from the right side, cross court, and that'll go out of bounds. Ashley Finch unable to kind of get the angle on the receive she wanted. And it's just a good effort there by Kennedy Wood to get to get the get the speed on, on the serve. There's Wood again. 
Goes right back to where she was the last time. This time Finch keeps it alive. Welsh into the net. It'll go down in front of the South Tama side. Point Clippers. They're leading now by one. Still really fighting into this. I expect uh, Sherman to send it back on over to that weak right side. This time down the middle, Meek gets it up into the air. Mullen finds the back line again. She's just been weaving, just finessing those sh kill shots just past the defenders at CCA. Excellent job. Tied at 13. Welsh to serve. And it's Wood setting up Henderson. Back onto the South Tama side now. And it goes out of bounds. Point to the Clippers. Already at this point, Durbin, we have had 10 ties and seven lead changes. Wow. Exciting third set. It's all you want. You know, on a on a match where the Trojans trailing two to one, two to none. And Mullen and Keen kind of dump it over there from the corner. Yeah, that time, that was a forced error on the side of CCA. So we're starting to change our tricks and making them st start uh, faulting what we've been doing. And now uh, Skyla Beck back to serve, received by Berkland. Big kill shot there from uh, Surridge. So again, 14-15 for South Tama. It's gonna be Lauer to serve for the Clippers. In the right corner, dug out by Meek. Beck to Mullen. Mullen goes all the way around to the other corner. Frakes, Beck, now Mullen. Little fake out against the block, saved by Gislason. Lower, right down the middle, and she's been very dangerous in that back line. And she scores the point for the Clippers. They lead by two. Yeah, I expect now when the uh... When the rubber hits the road, they're going to keep on serving it to Beck, and she's just, with that high kill percentage, is yeah. just going to be tough for South Tama. Lower sends it over to Finch. And the little dunk block there, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Is good for the Clippers. That'll Looks be like a timeout. South Tama. All right, we'll get a look at the student section here again as they're getting fired up. Absolutely, like you mentioned, Darvin, just if we were playing at CCA, this would not be the vibe. No, no, absolutely not. They, you know, the, the home crowd for CCA probably has a very loud and, and excited contingent with a team that just was at the state tournament last year. They got a lot to cheer about, but South Tama really showing up here tonight. and. You gotta love the good turnout, though. I, I haven't seen the, the food donation table since I came in here earlier today, but but uh, already a good amount of donations for the food pantry drive that, that the STC team was putting together tonight. And so gotta love to see that, too. That's a big need in our community. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, like you said, I don't know how I have the statistics in front of me, but every little bit helps, especially right. in for uh, folks in need here around the community. So excellent turnout for the food pantry and obviously for the game. Yeah. 17-14, three-point lead now for the Clippers. Avery Lower serving. Serve received by Ashley Finch. Mullen keeps it alive. Beck, Keen. Nice sliding save there by Lower. Gislason from the corner drops one in. Now it's four. Yeah, we were tied at one point, 14-14, but now it's slowly one of those things where just the fatigue sets in and South Tama is not being able to catch up. Gisselson back to serve. And it's wide. Excellent heads up play there from Frakes. Know when it came out and now it's 15, 18. Clippers in the lead in this third set. Gloria Mullen at the line serving for the Trojans. Squeaks it over the net. Wood. Tip over by Gislason and it finds a hole. A little drop in shot there by the Clippers and they lead 19 to 15. 
This time Henderson for CCA to serve. Hopefully a momentum shifter here. Set back, received by Mullen. Sets it over with the kill, can't quite get it on the, for South Tama. Frakes keeps it alive, sends it over to the CCA side. Diving save there by Skyla Beck. Now Cervantes sends it to the back line. Lower, into the middle. Diving save by Mullen. Trojans all out of position here, but they're staying alive. Henderson and Gissels into the back. Again, a diving save. And the kill by Jeanette Cervantes finishes off the rally. South Tama has got to love getting one of the, getting one of those long exchanges. They have not kind of been the beneficiary, but this time they get one. Yeah, if you want to quantify it in any way, I believe we've had like three total long rallies. Yeah. Definitely two one for CCA, but we got the most recent one. Looks like that ball's going to go out of bounds. Just a little too long there from the kill shot from CCA. Trojans pulled it within two. Natalie Meek, the captain, serving for the Trojans. Meek goes right at her fellow libero, Meg Berkland. Cervantes into the block, but it is going nowhere. As Sherman and Schreg were right there to shut it down. Schreg goes to the bench. Bliss Beck back on for the Clippers. Now Berkland serving to Cervantes. A little trouble at the net there by Beck. So double, double hit. hit. There. Yep. 21-17. CCA trying to pull this thing in for a landing here. Midway into this one, they've kind of established the lead. The Trojans haven't been able to, they've been put a few points on the board. Again, a double hit, this again against South Tama. Yeah, it's just one of those unfortunate things. Maybe it's frustration, fatigue, something setting in, but yeah. we're just not being cohesive and clicking. And now Berkland back to serve for Clippers. Berkland serve goes long, out of bounds, point Trojans. I mean, we're still in this, still about four point difference, but I yep. mean, still the body language hasn't tra changed at all. No, it's been pretty steady for, for CCA. Mm -hmm. South team has got a lot of energy, but sometimes that's, it's been energy that is a little unstable, kind of mm -hmm. go, goes, goes the way you don't want it to. And, and that just speaks to the, to the mismatch too, mm -hmm. a, a team yeah. that's, that's uh, been to the state tournament and, and kind of the, the heavy favorite here tonight. Yes. 23-18 now. Gissel send to serve, received by Meek. Passes Welsh, it over. Welsh, big shot into the block. Defended well by Beck and Sherman. Cervantes now fires it off Sherman's hands and out of bounds. Point South Tama. Really heads up quick succession play. The staunch defense all night for the side of CCA. This time South Tama was able to catch up and uh, be with the quick hands on that one. Now it's Ashley Finch coming back in to serve for STC. One point away from set and game point. It will be Sherman to finish it off. Into the game comes Kennedy Wood. 24-19, game point. However this ends, this will be the, the highest scoring effort, the best set, so to speak, for South Tama. The last two finished 17-25, 14-25, and South Tama pu pushes it to 19. Let's see if they can keep it going. Welsh pushes it over. Wood to Lauer. Off the hands of Ashley Finch and out of bounds. And that will do it. Final score of the third set. South Tama loses 25-19. to Excellent job by our girls tonight. I mean, it's just one of those things where the score of getting 3 0 on the set set list. Yeah. Just that doesn't speak volumes to how well these girls played against the state runner up last year, went basically undefeated. And our girls who went three and seven, now three and eight, just still 
I'm really excited for, especially these home games now for our STC Trojans. Yeah, absolutely. Our next broadcast for, for STC Volleyball will be back here on Tuesday of next week. South Tama hosts Williamsburg in that one. Uh, Williamsburg kind of in the middle of the WAMAC standings at, the, at this point, coming in a little bit, um, little bit more even of a matchup. It'll be interesting to see how they're looking as uh, as we get to next week. But South Tampa's got a busy schedule between now and then. So on Thursday, the Trojans will travel to Des Moines to take on Des Moines Hoover in a new matchup. I don't think the Trojans and and uh, I think it's the Huskies maybe uh, Des Moines Hoover. Um, I don't think they've seen each other maybe ever. I, I haven't seen the the uh, matchups past uh, past varsity bound, but um, but anyway, so they're going to go they're going to go to Des Moines on Thursday and then they go to. Um, they go to GMG for the GMG tournament on Saturday. That'll be against Bell Plain, BGM, Collins Maxwell, Dunkerton, the GMG Wolverines, Meskwaki Settlement, Montezuma, and Waterloo Christian for the Clippers. If I can get their sheet in front of me here. Next up, they are going to be in action on Saturday over at Iowa City West High. It's going to be the Live Like Line Tournament. Going to be a stacked lineup over there in Iowa City on Saturday. So number one CCA stays undefeated tonight. They're going over there as the number one ranked team in class 4A. They've also got Dowling Catholic. They're first ranked in class 5A with a six and one record. Then you've got third ranked Ankeny uh, in, in class 5A, they're five and two. Then eighth ranked Iowa City Liberty in class, also in class 5A. And then also ninth ranked uh, Wallet Catholic in 3A. You've also got 10th ranked 2A team, Iowa City Regina Catholic, and 15th ranked Mid Prairie, ranked, yeah, 15th in Class 3A. Just a whole bunch of ranks, so definitely yeah. going to be a power day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so that's up next for Coach Jackie Club and the CCA Clippers. We will be live next on Friday of this week for STC football. Excuse me there. So yeah, we'll be live around uh, 6.30 for the pregame show. Varsity kickoff scheduled for 7.30. Make sure to tune in if you can't get out and cheer on the Trojans Friday night. We'll be back on Tuesday of next week with some more volleyball. I'd like to say thank you to our sponsors. They include Berkwood Village of Tama Toledo, Salt Creek Wind, Mercy Care Tama, Iowa Premium, State Bank of Toledo, SNS Car Wash, Cruising Phillips Funeral Home, Robach Lumber, Stein Robach Floor Covering, Medicap Pharmacy, Mark West and Hoyer Law Office, Assured Partners Insurance, Appraisal and Realty Services, Sharn Webers, and TFD Photo and Film. Trojan Country Broadcast also made possible by the Charlie Townsley Memorial. Any final thoughts for us, Hunter, before we head out? Yeah, I'm just excited to see how both of these teams are going to progress throughout the season. Definitely good job. Uh, from our girls in all positions. I know our stars are slowly coming out and shining tonight, and I'm excited to see uh, uh, CCA return to another state. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're going to be exciting. competitive this year. I think uh, they're going to represent the WAMAC Conference well and, and should be very uh, fun to watch come late this year. So good best of luck to them as they continue on, and we'll be excited to follow the Trojans throughout our uh, the rest of our season here. So uh, for Hunter White, I'm Darvin Graham. Uh, thanks for being with us.